Hello everyone. Welcome to a new tutorial. In this tutorial we will be covering entire HTML in one video. This video will contain everything which you need to learn as a web developer in HTML. Before starting this tutorial I would request you to please subscribe to this channel as this channel requires your support. This video will cover topics like introduction, tags, elements, attributes, HTML hyperlink and images, HTML favicon, HTML a frame, how to include entities, symbols and emojis in web page, HTML tables, lists and forms, how to include audio and video in a web page and lot more. Let's start the tutorial. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language which is the standard markup language for creating web pages. HTML describes the structure of a web page. Current version of HTML we are using is HTML5. The extension for the HTML file is .html or .htm. Let's quickly start to create our first page. Create a blank new folder. Open the folder and press Shift plus right click. Then select Open Visual Code. If this feature isn't available you can directly open the VS code and select the folder manually. Now create a new HTML file. After creating the file press exclamation mark then press enter. Your HTML boilerplate is ready. You can edit now as per your wish. Now if you have done. You will see a go live option at bottom right corner if not then you have to download the extension. Go to the extension and type live server. After that you can install the extension. Live server extension is very much important to view your browser result. Now let's understand the each line of the code one by one. The doc type HTML declaration defines that this document is an HTML5 document. The HTML is the root element of the web page. The head element contains meta information about the HTML page. Meta tags in HTML are used to provide additional information about a page to search engines and other clients. They are placed in the head section of the HTML page. The title element specifies a title for the HTML page. The body element defines the document's body. All the element visible inside a web page are written inside body tag. The peak element defines a paragraph. In HTML, Tags are the building block used to define the structure and content of a web page. They are special keywords enclosed in angle brackets that tells the browser how to display the content. Just like P tag which is used to define paragraph. HTML headings are defined with the H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6 tags. H1 tag is the biggest heading tag. H6 tag is the smallest heading tag. A HTML element contains a start tag, some content and an end tag. HTML elements with no content are called empty elements. Example. The BR element defines a line break and is an empty element without a closing tag. The HR element is used to draw a horizontal line and separate content. HTML attributes provide additional information about HTML elements. Tag name attribute name equals value content slash tag name. Example. An attribute content editable, which enables user to edit the content directly in the browser but only on the user computer not the server. HTML links are called hyperlinks which allows users to click and go to different pages in the browser. We link web pages through H tag which is called anchor tag. The ref attribute of the anchor element which stores the URL to the link's destination. The target attribute specifies where to open the link document. The target attribute can have one of the following values. Underscore self. It opens the document in same window slash tab as it is clicked. Underscore blank. Opens the document in new tab. Underscore parent. Opens the document in the parent frame. Underscore top. Opens the document in the full body of the window. Coming on to the types of URL. 1. Absolute URL. Links to an external page that is hosted on another website. Example. Link of an external page is like a ref equals www.facebook.com. Click here slash a two relative URL links of an source that is hosted within the website. Example link of about page of the same website. A ref equals index slash about.html 
about us slash a. The title attribute is used to create a tooltip. A tooltip generally carries some extra information about an element. Let's see the demonstration how we can create a tooltip. If you need some random text while using VS Code, you can type lorem the number of words you need like 20 or 30, then press enter. You can clearly see the tooltip carrying the additional information, this is a paragraph visible as we hover over the paragraph element. The HTML ID attribute is used to specify a unique ID for an HTML element. There cannot be more than one element with the same ID in an HTML document. You may understand by this that in a class everyone has a unique ID number and no two students have same ID. The HTML class attribute is used to specify a class for an HTML element. Multiple HTML elements can share the same class. The attribute is used to identify each HTML elements uniquely. Thus, using ID attribute we can also link various sections of a web page. All you need to do is just mention the ID with a hashtag symbol in the href attribute. Let's create a bookmark or navbar using this feature. This what you are seeing is a shortcut for using VS Code. Whichever tag you need multiply it with number of tags you need. First you need to create a separate 3 to 4 section and give each section a unique ID. To demonstrate a ID we use hashtag symbol and to demonstrate a class we use full stop symbol. For clarity let's add a heading in the top of each section so it would be easy to identify. Now as the links will be clicked we will reach the respective section. IMG tag which is used to display image on a web page. There is no closing tag for IMG tag. This means IMG is self-closing tag. The SRC attribute carries the link of the image. The alt attribute specifies an alternate text for an image, if the image for some reason cannot be displayed. Types of URL. Absolute URL. Here we use image links which are globally saved. Relative URL. Here we generally use image links which are locally saved. Now let's see the demonstration of each URL one by one. First absolute URL in which we will be copying external link or image which is globally uploaded on internet. As you can see the image is clearly visible. Now let's change the URL in order to see whether the alternative text is visible or not. When the URL is incorrect we can see the alternative text clearly visible. Now coming to relative URL. We have downloaded one of the image from internet and saved it locally for demonstration. As you can see the image is perfectly visible. A favicon is a small image displayed next to the page title in the browser tab. To add a favicon to your website, Either save your favicon image to the root directory of your web server or create a folder image and save the image in it. Let's see a quick demonstration of it. Now notice beside the title of the web page. You will see the image icon or the favicon. HTML tables allow web developers to arrange data into rows and columns. TD stands for table data. TR stands for table row. TH stands for table header. Let's see a quick demonstration of it. Since we have not given any border to it, let's give some border value through a border attribute. 
In this tutorial we will only focus on HTML part and we will ignore styling using CSS. We will cover CSS part in upcoming videos. HTML lists allow to arrange items of a web page in a well-defined structure of lists. There are basically three types of list. Unordered HTML list, ordered HTML list, description HTML list. An unordered HTML list starts with the UL tag. Each list item starts with the LI tag. There are three types of UL lists. One, this, two, circle, three, square. Here is a quick demonstration. An ordered HTML list starts with OL tag. Each list item starts with the LI tag. There are various types of OL lists. Decimal, upper alpha, lower alpha, upper Roman, lower Roman. Here is a quick demonstration. A description list is a list of terms with a description of each term. The DL tag defines the description list. The DT tag defines the term, name, and. The DD tag describes each term. Here is a quick demonstration. Block level elements. A block level element always starts on a new line, and the browsers automatically add some space before and after the element. A block level element always takes up the full width available. Example, div, p, inline elements. An inline element does not start on a new line. An inline element only takes up as much width as necessary. Example, span. Let's look at a quick demonstration. We have taken two block div elements which are block elements and they occupy entire width of a web page. Before showing inline element let me show you what are comments in HTML and how they are written. Comments are something which are not displayed in the browser and are generally written for user reference to understand the code. Now let's see inline elements. We are taking two span elements and you will notice that unlike block elements, inline elements only occupy space necessary. As you can see the div elements take entire width whereas the inline elements take only the space necessary. A HTML iframe is used to display a web page within web page. Here is the syntax. Let's see a quick demonstration. Here we will try to display a web page list.html in the new web page iframe.html. So you can see list.html inside the web page. Let's make it look clear by giving the iframe border. After specifying the border, it is clearly identified as iframe. A semantic element is an element which clearly describes its meaning to both the browser and the developer. Example of non-semantic elements, div and span by hearing their name it cannot be defined what does these elements contain. Example of semantic elements, form, tabled these elements clearly define what they contain. In HTML there are some semantic elements that define different parts of a web page. Each element describes its uses by its name, HTML entities and symbols. Some characters in HTML are reserved which means you can indirectly use these tags. For example, if you use character like less than, greater than, directly the browser might mix them with your tags. So these character require use of certain code. Let's see a quick demonstration. If suppose you want to display BR tag in the browser you cannot directly write it. If you do so the browser will recognize it as a tag. In order to do so we need to specify it with an entity code like and LT, for less than symbol and and GT, for greater than symbol. Now you can view BR tag in the browser. Similarly, it applies for HTML emojis. Emojis are characters from the UTF-8 character set. These characters can also be included in the browser using different types of codes. A list of all these HTML entities, symbols and emojis link will be provided in the description. You can practice these on your own and check it how it works. Check out the link in the description box of this video. An HTML form is used to collect information from user side. Form tag is used to create HTML forms. For taking input in a form input tag is used. Form tag has two attributes action and method. Both these attributes are associated with backend. Have a look on different types of input in a HTML form. Let's create a basic form. 
As we have already discussed form attributes like action and method are associated with backend and database and at this point of time we are only learning about frontend. So let's skip this part. Label tag is optional. Name attribute and input tag is essential as it provides what values exactly the input field carries. Text area is similar to input tag only difference is that it is a bit wider than input tag. There are a variety of input types you can use in a HTML form. You need to practice accordingly. Here we go. You can see we have created a very simple form. There is an attribute in input tag called required attribute which makes the field required and you cannot submit the form without filling that field. Like this you can create a form with variety of input tags and fields you need to practice at once. List of variety of input tags will be provided to you in the description box. The HTML audio element is used to play an audio file on a web page. Here is a syntax how you can add audio. Similarly, the HTML video element is used to play a video file on a web page. Syntax for video element is shown. Here is a quick demonstration of both how to import audio and video. To import audio and video in your browser using HTML you need to keep the downloaded file in your folder. If in case the audio file is not supported in your browser you need to give an alternative text. Same applies for importing video element. You will not hear the audio as I have muted the audio while recording. Since the size of video element is too big, let's specify a proper video height and width. So this was all in this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Now you have learned all the important topics of HTML which you need to learn as a developer. There are various other tags like tags for bold and italics which have not been explained as these tags are not required anymore in modern web development. Please subscribe to this channel, share this video with your friends like this video and do not forget to comment on this video. Bye.